All right, we're going to have a brief discussion about brakes. The first thing I'm going to say about brakes is, is that if you are not a qualified brake technician, do not work on your brakes. Okay, brakes are the single most important thing on this truck. Make sure that you buy the highest quality components. Don't cut corners on brakes. When you're doing an oil change on a truck and you're going through your checklist, the best way to check for uh, brakes is your pads right here. You look right in through here. The wheel will be in here, but when you look from this direction, you can see the thickness of the pad. Now, pad thickness does not necessarily mean that the brakes are still good. Uh, there's a situation that happens, especially when there's large loads involved, called glazing. And glazing is a situation where the brake pad, as the brake pad is on the surface of the rotor, it heats up to a point where it actually melts and it will become glassy. And once it cools down from that point on, the truck will never stop correctly again. If you buy a cheap set of brake pads over here at Pet Boys or something like this, they're going to glaze very quickly and start squealing and squalling and carrying on. I highly discourage that you do that. And yes, you're going to might pay, you might pay double or even more for a quality set of brake pads, but they will reward you with long, long time of good service without squealing and, and, and chattering and carrying on. The other thing I want to talk about is brake rotors. I don't like to cut brake rotors. You want maximum thickness because the thinner you make the brake rotor, the more prone it will be to vibration, uh, warping and whatnot. So when, the, when it gets close to specification in terms of thickness, I, I generally just don't cut them, I just replace them. If the, if the rotors are to a point where they're vibrating and you cut them, they're usually going to, nine times out of ten, they're going to go right back to vibrating in a very short amount of time. You already have the thing apart. The brake rotor, yeah, it's expensive, but you know what? You're carrying yourself and you're carrying your family and you're carrying your equipment or you're carrying your workers. It's, it's, it's a cost of doing business. It's a cost of being here. Very important, don't ever scrimp. Now, if you feel like a mechanic is, is playing games with you, that's one thing. But it's quite another to cut a corner and then have to pay for it dearly in the future. One of the common questions that I have asked me is when to replace calipers. As long as the calipers are working correctly and that they're centering up correctly, then you're not going to have a problem. You notice how that this one, this particular rotor has a different thickness from side to side on the air cooling vanes. This is because the caliper wasn't able to center on the, the rotor and as a result it would drag on the one side or did most of its braking on the one side and as a result it damaged the rotor to a point where it had to be replaced. This is something that you can keep an eye on during oil changes. This is something that you can go looking for. If they're not wearing evenly, then you need to get it to a brake shop or do the brake repair if you're qualified ASAP because it's going to cause you, uh, cost you a whole bunch more money if you put it off and it may cause a, a catastrophic failure. Now I'm going to talk about brake pads for just a second. I'm not a representative for Ford, but you know what? Ford makes the best brake pads. I have a, a customer that, okay, he's constantly on the road moving horses all over the southeast, and he found that when we ran Ray Besto's pads, he's getting him about 55, 60,000 miles before they needed to be replaced, but the Ford ones, which were more expensive, there's no question about them being more expensive, but the, the Fords got him close to 90, 95. Okay, that's a significant increase, that's 30% more, 40% more life out of the Ford products. Ford does make quality products. Brakes is, is an area that we do not want to ever cut corners. These are front brake pads off of a 2001 Super Duty. These are the ones that came off of there. You see how there's a shine to these things? You see how they're nice and slick? Well, that's a really bad thing. Even though there's some still some meat on here, even though there still like, looks like there's a little wear and tear left on these things, these are shot, and I'll tell you why. The reason why they're shiny is what's called high-speed glazing. If you are pulling a trailer or you're pulling something heavy or maybe you're just going too damn fast and slow down real quick, all 80% of your braking, 75% of your braking is done by these front brake pads. And what happens when high speed glazing uh, occurs is that the, this part is pressing against the surface of the rotor and it creates so much friction and so much heat that it actually melts the top layer of the brake material. See how shiny that is? And it hardens back up in a much harder surface, much like glassy surface. See how this is all dull, it's, it's kind of rough looking? This is a brand new set of Ford brake pads. Before I go any further in this, if you do not feel comfortable 
in performing your own brake work, then take it to a professional. This is an awareness thing, just to explain to you how it's done. I'm going to show you how to change front brake pads quickly on one of these trucks. So we come over here, and here's the front driver's side wheel of this 2001 Super Duty. We're going to first of all jack it. You want to have a good floor jack. Now this, is, this jack is old as Christmas, but it will jack this truck like it's nobody's business. Remove the cap with a screwdriver. Pop off the lug nuts. Okay, next thing we need to do is use dial caliper and measure the thickness. 1.65. So 1.65, and it says, and it's measured in millimeters on here, 36 millimeters. If you take the 1.65 and you multiply it by 25.4, which is how many millimeters there are in an inch, then it turns out to be 41.9 millimeters, almost 42 millimeters. So we're were uh, five millimeters, six millimeters uh, larger than spec. If the, if the rotor is under 36, you replace it. If it's vibrating, you replace it. Uh, and most or more often than not, uh, it's because of cheap brake pads. So the rotor doesn't have to be dealt with. Now at this point, we're going to need to install uh, a pair of new pads and new springs. 